Our take continues our commitment to traveling our world and profile what we like to call our intrepid women travelers. And with me today are Evita Evie Robinson, the founder of the Nomadness Travel Tribe. Evita. Yes. E.V. Robinson. I cannot <laughs> wait to get to your pictures. I heard you and Sonia chatting before the show. I yes. can't wait to hear more about that. And then also with us is Kelly Pierre Lewis, who is an avid traveler and the voice behind the website MissKellyYP.com, where she writes about her travels and other interests. Well, I have to, uh, I have to start with you, Evie, because I heard you and Sonia swapping stories. <laughs> you were just in India, Jeepur, is that correct? Yes, yes. We were um, in India. We had a nomadness trip there and we started off in Delhi um, mainly in Jaipur also a day trip to Agra to see the Taj Mahal. Oh excuse me Jaipur. Yeah you can't, <laughs> you can't go to India without yeah. seeing the Taj Mahal. Clearly I have not been. I need to go though yes. so I learned how to pronounce the name. <laughs> yeah no it was an absolutely amazing experience we went there for the Holy Festival of Colors so it was it was just something amazing. Kelly was actually also on the trip with us and such an interesting experience and a place that most people don't think to just up and travel to. Festival colors. I mean, I saw the picture. The yeah. guy has a lot of colors <laughs> on him, but what are they celebrating? Oh, look. look By the I, end of it, cute. everybody looks like Avatar. Like, that's, what I, that's what I tell everybody. I'm like, you end up looking like Avatar by the end of it, but it, it's amazing. Um, Time-wise, it really is um, signifying the change of seasons. Um, a lot of the, you know, out with the, with the old, in with the new, and it really is a celebration celebration people take to the streets, strangers, especially kids, come up to you screaming happy holy and just placing it all over your face. And it's just a beautiful time, physically, you know, a beautiful time to be in India. It's and, awesome. and Kelly, you have to tell us about your travels as well. You've got some beautiful photos oh, too. Thank you. I mean, I love to travel and just experience and meet new people and experience different places. And I mean, India, as Avita was talking about, was just a magnifi magnificent experience. Um, but also places like Dubai, and, um, you know, the Caribbean, like Trinidad. And um, I really like to mix it up and go really anywhere. I was just joking with someone. It doesn't really take much convincing for me to get up on a plane and go anywhere. So, yeah. You know, it's it's nice to travel. Believe me, I, I love it too. My family's from Jamaica, so that's where I, I, I typically go. But I did have the opportunity a few, I shouldn't say a few years ago, it was actually a while now, to visit uh, Thailand and Japan, mm -hmm. which I think we have mm -hmm. photos of. Uh, what I really appreciated, uh, particularly about Thailand, yes, this is Thailand here. This was actually a, uh, a Catholic church in Pattaya, Thailand. What I like so much about visiting the Asian countries, mm -hmm. and you tell me whether this was true for you. This was in Tokyo. Japan. Nice. Look at how much taller I am. I, know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I could have put her in my I know. pocket. I know. You know? I mean, it was just remarkable. Yeah. But what I like so much in particular about traveling to Asian cultures, and again, please tell me if this mm -hmm. applied for you, as a black woman, I went with my own pre pre preconceived notions as to how I was going to be welcomed. Um, what I found about Asian culture and society was that they were a lot more welcoming and a lot more warm than I assumed. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I can tell you, when I was in Tokyo, myself and a friend of mine, an African American, we were in a store. They did not have the size we needed. And uh, there was only one employee at the time. He left the store and we're like, what's he doing? Why do you leave? <laughs> because we're used to being followed, having yes. cameras on you and what have you. They left the store to go get the size in, in, in like 20 minutes and we were there. Did you find your visits to these, I mean, cultures that they're not Western, they're not right. anything mm -hmm. that we in American society are prepared for. Right. What was that experience like just as black women in these, yeah. these societies? It's very interesting. I lived for a year in Japan. I lived in Niigata, Japan, and I lived in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So I was really saturated in what the cultures were like. And it was something where they went from seeing me in a shopping mall to seeing me every day. And I was teaching some of their kids as an English teacher in school. So I went from the shock of the new and children running away from me and crying like what is this to them having me in class one day and it being an amazing thing them wanting to touch my hair you know yes. which is some yeah, people like it some people don't <laughs> I don't really take it for more than what it is it's a curiosity and they were always respectful um, definitely open arms I remember going out to a, um, a hip-hop club in Niigata Japan which is the city I lived in and when they heard I was from New York let alone that I was residing in the Bronx when I was in New York it was like the seas parted I was just like oh my goodness like you know about hip hop and and, and you, you were like Miss Jay Z exactly and you Honestly. speak you speak um, without language you know there's you communicate through different ways and my choppy Japanese and their choppy English we still made it work and friendships I have lifelong friends now in both 
of those countries. Mm -hmm. So I definitely, I definitely agree in regards with Asia. That's where I spent the majority of my traveling. Yeah, and for me, I didn't live there, but I went to China, and initially I just thought I was just going to stick out like a sore right, thumb, exactly. and you know, I was just going to be the tallest one there, like you mentioned. But they were really almost intrigued, I want to say, because for some people, for some of them, they, this was the first time they've seen an African American woman, That's yes. right. especially an African American woman with an afro. Yeah. Um, you know, so I got all the pulling and you know, taking pictures with family and um, you know, holding babies. I'm like, am I running for something? Like <laughs> so, so yeah, it definitely changed my perception, um, my initial perception um, of going to some place like China, and it was very enjoyable for for the most part yeah. from that aspect of it. Yeah. And Sonia, I understand that you have some, you, you're, you've yeah, traveled so, to many, many places, but I understand yeah. you have some questions about a, a trip do. to India. I do. So I grew up going to India. Both yes. my parents are from India. And every trip, I would always get sick. Because although, <laughs> you know, I consider myself Indian, I'm not from India. Right. It's totally new food and yes. germs. And regardless, I would spend at least half of every trip in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious. You said that you had some trick. Yeah. That kept many of your. Well, we members had a good. Um, we had a pretty good success rate. <laughs> <laughs> people not getting sick on the trip, um, which was amazing. Um, but we prepped them really well. You do turn into a bit of a pin cushion with all the immunizations and, you know, anti-malaria pills and things like that. But a key tip that I tell people all the time, oregano oil. Oregano oil. Oregano oil. oil. It I is a natural so antibiotic. You start taking it, it beforehand or once well, you get on the ground? you take it before you eat. Before and or after you mm -hmm. eat. And you take a couple droplets. It tastes horrendous. It's one of the most pungent taste that you will ever have and smells of your life, but it will save your stomach. I've had situations that felt very close to food poisoning and it was enough to just settle my stomach. And what mm -hmm. it does is it kills parasites in your intestines, but it's natural. It's like a natural remedy. Amazing. My homeopath right. actually recommended it to me when I went on my first trip there. And these are the kinds of, of tips and information that you ladies provide on, uh, on yeah. both of your sites. And I understand that you also have some tips for people who do yes. want to travel. What I like so much about uh, what both of you have said is how uh, traveling is not you know, the price necessarily mm -hmm. is not going to be what stops you. You're going to find a way right. to afford to explore a new exactly. town, a new city, a new country. So I, I want to get to those tips. Um, one of the first things that you say is prioritizing what's important. Yes. So what, what does that mean? Are you talking about prioritizing whether or not you want to stay in a four star or is that based on where you want to go? It really, even on a base level, before you even get to planning for the country that you want to go to, that's on a level of just your finances. Okay. What is a priority to you? You know, can you open up a side bank account and throw $20 a paycheck in there and not think about it and have it automatically deducted? Therefore, when you want to go travel, you already have a basis, you know, kind of a pot to pick from before you go and put the rest of your money into it. So really prioritizing what's necessary. You know, for the younger, you know, students, if it's, you know, television, maybe there's a certain bill that you can kind of get rid of, you know, or buffer a bit and have that money go towards an account that will help buffer what you're doing. Um, but definitely lodging. I mean, there's so many options. Hostels, Airbnb, we definitely swear by. Yeah. And I love Airbnb because it's such an authentic experience. You're staying in an apartment or a home. So you get a real deal view of what it's like to be immersed and living in that place instead of a hotel where, at least for the tribe, we're very family-like. So when we go on trips, I find hotels tend to have us a bit more disjointed than I like. So when you walk into, you know, a house or a loft, it's just, you feel like you're at you home You already, already feel like you're, exactly. like you're at home in this mm -hmm. new country. Uh, you have a few more tips. You talk about being mindful of your destination. Look at cost-effective lodging, which you've mm -hmm. already made reference to. And also you say, be smart when booking flights. I tell you, I try to bring out the most intelligent part of me <laughs> when I go to book my flights. But I feel like, I mean, what kind of leeway do I have? They, they tell you what the flight prices mm -hmm. are. Be smart about booking flights. What does that mean I need to be doing? I would say travel more during off-peak times. You know, so many people run out to travel during the summer, and it's the most expensive time of the year to travel. It doesn't, I don't care where you're going. Mm -hmm. That and the holidays. If you can find places that are interesting during off-peak generic flight times, that will help. Um, accumulating miles. You know, we have people, especially in the tribe, that have dozens of <laughs> airline um, cards that they use, and they're very mindful to the point where it's mapped out on a spreadsheet of where their their miles can accumulate so that's definitely something and there's so many sites you can pick from though you know you have the travel zoos with you know the different sales skyscanner.com is something that I'm really really interested in you can literally put where you are leaving from and in the tab you can put everywhere and what it will do is by price it will 
set up a navigation of what the cheapest place is from where you are to travel to. And if you, you know, just want to find a really cool place that's cost effective, Skyscanner is a really good tool. All right, ladies, thank yeah. you so much. Uh, Evie Robinson, the founder of No Madness Travel Tribe, and Kelly Pierre Lewis. Your website is misskellyp.com. Yes. All right, thank you, ladies. You know what? I think you guys may have found uh, another tribes woman. Oh, <laughs> I would love to have you. I would love to have you both. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both. And thank you, Sonia. The, the hour goes by pretty quickly, yes. but I can't say thank you oh. enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give you a hug oh, after the show. Yeah. <laughs> can't thank you enough for joining us, and I, I, I hope I can twist your arm and get you to come back again. Oh, uh, well, I would love to. All right, great. Well, I'm Christina Brown, and you are watching Our Take.